sir metro uh, now how uh, what is the network length sir metro at the moment we have 42 and uh, we will be adding another 6 in this month right sir and about 4 lakh the total 72 is under construction now so starting oh, oh, this oh. number and over next 3 4 years they should get commissioned okay you have about 4 lakh ridership now pre covid uh, we were having uh, uh, four and a half to five but okay. of course now it has come down to about 65000 social right. distance etc not correct hmm? uh -huh. good afternoon mr dikshit good afternoon how are you i am fine yeah I see you. Nikshay Saab, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nice seeing all of you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Michael. Good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Dixit. Long time no see. How are you? Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic to see you. Likewise, likewise. It has been a long time. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, how things are getting better in India at the moment? Oh, uh, yeah, certainly getting better. Excellent. Getting better, better than uh, earlier. Well, Germany, with the winter coming, is not really improving. We we have our second lockdown. Oh, yeah, we heard. And But here in Delhi, there's another problem, you know, of pollution. <laughs> oh, yeah. my goodness. That is making yeah. the matters worse. Let's hope we soon have a cure for this thing. <clears throat> it is uh, starting to get, uh, well, nasty. So let's see how it will develop. But um, anyhow. Now the question is, how soon the vaccine is coming? Uh, uh, <clears throat> in Germany, they're saying there might be something approved by the end of no November. So uh, still this month. I don't really believe it, <clears throat> but let's see. No, but now it's, I think, the time, uh, I think all that timetable which was given earlier is coming closer. Perhaps, uh, as you say, it will materialize, I think, by end of November. But in a smaller number, in fact. True. Until vaccination of the population is done, this will still take a while, several months, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people but can live by the hope. We, but, but if it we, starts, people can yes. live by the hope. Yeah. <laughs> But now that we have a, a great outcome of the U.S. election, I mean, what else can go wrong? Oh, oh, oh. I think Germany, Germany looks to be very, very happy. This is, uh, this is your host. This is your host, Vimi Chaudhary speaking. I'm, my apologies to our eminent speakers for uh, stopping this uh, discussion which you were having. Very interesting discussions regarding the america and the changes which are happening but then we go back to our subject uh, for which we are all present here and we begin with uh, the breakaway sessions uh, as mentioned these are going to be starting in the five virtual rooms herein as we begin this is on emerging trends in mass transit system where our focus as we do it in the on the emerging trends in mass transit system broadly covering the cost containment, operational efficiency, new revenue sources, governance framework, leveraging technology, digital payments, and customer experiences, etc. Uh, this is a session which is going to be again for one hour 30 minutes. Uh, we request the presenters uh, to have, make the presentation for max uh, 10 minutes because this is going to be then followed by a QA session. And we look forward to active participation also of all our participants and delegates as they send in the questions in the chat box. Uh, so with that, uh, I welcome everyone on board. The session moderator, Shri Jedi, the Officer on Special Duty, UT and Ex Officio Joint Secretary, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, who belongs to the Indian Railway Service of Electrical Engineers. And prior to that, he has worked on several important assignments in Indian Railways related with train operations, maintenance of rolling stock and traction distribution systems, rolling stock manufacturing, IT systems, and uh, others. Our eminent uh, panelists, we have Mr. Ajay Seth, the Managing Director of Bangalore Metro Rail Corporation, who's going to be speaking to us on Metro Planning Operations and Technology. 
Our next eminent speaker, Mr. V.K. Singh, the Managing Director, National Capital Region Transport Corporation, who talks to us on the original rapid transit system. Dr. Bridesh Bikshit, the Managing Director of Maharashtra Metro Rail Corporation, uh, who speaks to us on Metro Rio. And Professor Sivanand Swami, the Executive Director, CHD University, who's going to be talking to us on PRTS. Uh, and uh, we also have the international examples, which is going to be shared by Mr. Ying Hui Jenny Chen, the BBG from BBG Berlin. Uh, I believe there is a slight uh, change in our uh, speaker as we have the last one. Uh, we have Mr. Diet, uh, Michelle Lolly, the board member of uh, Deutsche Bahn International Operations, uh, who's going to be joining us. Uh, and uh, without my all panelists, and I would like to request our moderator, Shri Jadeep, uh, for uh, taking these conversations uh, forward uh, with our panelists. Thank you. The topic of uh, today's discussion is uh, regarding uh, emerging trend in mass rapid transit system. As we all know that mass tra rapid transit system is the lifeline of any city. It is not only a transport solution alone, but a complete ecosystem uh, which transforms the livability of the person within the city and around. Some of the key areas which is critically looked by uh, transit agencies is governing model, improving financial sustainability, then use of technology. Standardization is also very important for cost optimization. And uh, as a whole mobility as a service. And the other thing which is coming up uh, in recent time about uh, that uh, uh, the regional connectivity with the main city, it is also assuming significance. And uh, we have, uh, today we have women and personalities from uh, different metro organizations and also uh, academia and uh, member from uh, Dushban. And uh, we will be uh, starting our presentation with uh, the presentation by Mr. Ajay Seet. Uh, first of all, I introduce about Mr. Ajay, Mr. Ajay Seth. Mr. Ajay Seth is currently working as Managing Director, Bangalore Metro Rail Corporation. Most of his professional experience has been in the domains of public finance and social sector administration, dealing with the matters concerning budget, account, tax policy, and administration, project appraisal, foreign investments, bilateral, and multilateral, uh, financial cooperation, development financing, and public-private partnership. Out of his career of 33 years, he has been in the public finance and taxation domain for 18 years in different positions in Government of India, Government of Karnataka, and Asian Development Bank. He was associated with goods and service tax domain for eight years till 2015. First as Secretary, Budget and Resources, dealing with tax policy, as Commissioner, Commercial Tax, Handling Tax Administration, and therefore thereafter as a special invitee to various committees formed by Empowered Committee of State Finance Minister. He is a recipient of Prime Minister's Award for Excellence in Public Administration in 2003, uh, a member of the team of Transformation of Commercial Tax Administration of Karnataka. Now it's over to Mr. Ajay Seth. Uh, thank you, Jaideep, and I'll just share my presentation and then we can get going. Uh, so, welcome to all and uh, the topic given to me for this metro operations and uh, technology. Now, here, uh,
Now we are just U.S. election is just over. Hopefully, over in the sense a few still few things are there. So I'm picking up one tagline. Of course, it's a 1992 tagline, of which was used by Bill Clinton uh, on the economy. Is the economy is stupid, and uh, for us it is a ridership, and that is a mantra for us. That whatever planning we do, uh, it is around the ridership. Where we are, 750 kilometer metro network in the country and adding about 100 kilometers every year. But that's not a scalable model for a country of our size. And hitherto, the past over two decades, the story started in 1998 in uh, Delhi, and uh, it has been a largely an engineering perspective for metro. And the planning has to shift now from engineering perspective to financial and economic perspective. We have got enough capacity in the country to design and implement engineering projects or other metro projects, but little thought has gone into financial and economic perspective. And for doing so, we'll have to be in a position where we can influence the urban ecosystem because metro is the most efficient way of public transport, but bigger the system, more is the inertia. We can't go to small lanes. We have to be only on major corridors. Unless we are in a position to influence the urban ecosystem, there are problems there, problems around ridership. And this is where the ministry has been guiding us, hand-holding us, pushing us, directing us to get into those positions. How we can influence the urban ecosystem? Uh, being an implementer of a large project, generally we tend to get years of the decision makers of uh, the political executive, and we are in a better position to influence the urban ecosystem in terms of the policies, procedures. And there comes the question is that unless the development is around transit-oriented development, unless the urban ecosystem moves towards TOD, ridership will not come to uh, metros. Only one line in the country, and there's one line in the country which has the adequate ridership, which is Mumbai 1, which moves around 40,000 people per kilometer per day. Everybody else is around 20,000. Delhi's average is about 20,000. Hyderabad and Bangalore are about 15,000. Everybody else is about 5,000, 7,000 commuters per day per kilometer. These are suboptimal unless we reach to a daily ridership of about 25 to 30,000 commuters per day per kilometer. And that will possible not through uh, last mile and first mile connectivity. And the last mile, first mile connectivity for our financial viability will come when people can walk to a metro system and not by having uh, metro system very large, but that is a adequate densification around the mass transit system. The next one where uh, the economic and financial planning has to go that unless we plan for this multimodal integration, either we plan, implement, or perish. I use figuratively a caged tiger. Already the bus transport is like a caged tiger. We today, even if we were to pump in more buses, the speed of those buses, public transport, is so low because roads are no longer a public good because of the congestion, and the speed of the public transport buses are rather low. For us, it will be a different one where people can't reach a metro system. Only those who are in the near vicinity of a few hundred meters, they would reach, but not three kilometer, four kilometer people staying away can reach to a metro system. So this multimodal integration is a mantra which we have to move forward. And of course, like uh, just in the previous one, uh, there was a, or in this one itself, one of the speakers said, the pollution and urban pollution being a great problem. And whatever we do from the metro, we may be green, but what about rest of the urban ecosystem to so support electrification of mobility, green mobility in the city? Only then we get the ridership. And that brings up the, the next element, which is the metro operations. What do we do for a post-normal, post-COVID new normal? What the new normal is going to be? And I'm not talking about the present situation. We are still in the midst of the pandemic. Maybe hopefully over the next 12 months, we reach to a position of a new normal. Whether the new normal is going to be less ridership or is going to be an efficient ridership. Less ridership 
is possible at least in the medium term and medium term i am talking about next to three to five years just look at this manner government of india has now facilitating even for the it sector increasing t3 to work from home now the industry has found a way to work from home there are number of jobs where people can work tata group has taken a decision they have identified positions wherein they can make those people permanently work from home and they have started vacating commercial spaces so in the medium term you will have a problem of a less ridership but urbanization, as Honorable Minister said in his inaugural address, that uh, urbanization over the next two or two, three decades is going to be so strong. And of course, he talked about 2030, that the more and more people come in. So that will compensate to the next extent of work from home, but we will have a problem there. But the goal is that to have an efficient ridership, and that efficient ridership comes in when the commuter finds it convenient, convenience of the commuter. And which is the multimodal integration, modes of fair payment, etc. is efficient ridership. That is what the operations have to move. Third and fourth, I would like to bring to the attention where our emerging thoughts are going in and where uh, uh, we have to move into that direction is to get a financial viability. So far, our planning and operations have been on economic viability. And thereafter, we say, oh, no, no, we will make losses and that situation, the state government will help us. Those days are over in the sense that there is an acute stress on the fiscal, whether of government of India or of the state government. If you want to be on a pilot basis, some tens of few tens of kilometers of metro in each city, or maybe even few hundred is fine if you want to grow at 100 kilometers a year. But if you are looking for going by 500 kilometers of new network in the country every year, then we have to be reach a situation where we are financially viable on our own, except maybe for maximum three to five initial years. But we cannot say that we will keep on passing the buck for all time for the government and government will bail us out. One time assistance for investment, yes, but thereafter, certainly no. And that brings me to the, uh, the last set of thoughts, which are there. How do we get economies of scale? And uh, economies of scale is, is just a cartoon there that yes, is a great idea, but is it scalable or you want just to be a pilot metro? And for us, Delhi has done close to about 400 kilometer, but everybody else is about 20 kilometer, 30 kilometer, 50 kilometer of metro in a big city, which is just like a pilot level. Where do we get those economies of scale? Not by having a system level standardization. You have to have a form factor standardization, wherein the production, production of systems, even the civil design, and just give an example, in the railways, even the bridges are of a standard size. The span is a standard size. They don't design it 23.5 meter. Whatever is there, it will be either 25 or 27 or 30. That's standard even in a civil side they have got it. For us, system level is as long as there's a metro coach is 2.9 meter wide, we say it's a standardization. No. Each of the subsystems at the form factor level, plug and play kind of a situation, respective the metro. And the next one, half number Bharat, from macro level, it is about be self-sufficient but from the metro perspective unless we are in a standardized manner only then we get the economies of the scale and then the cost comes down just look at this manner that 10 years back a rolling stock coach used to cost about 10 crore now it is costing about seven and a half crore because indigenization has taken place but if Bharat, if it is at a scale it can come down to further one is about enhanced capacity potential Meaning, whether from the same rupee of investment, we can get more capacity. It is not about CVTC alone. I'm just giving an example. But also if it's smart civil design, unless we design the system in a manner where, where the turnbacks are located, we may have a CVTC, but it still may not be in a position to run trains at one and a half minute frequency because our civil designs would have been done in a manner which can allow us for train to return, which takes two minutes. That means we'll be stuck with about four minute frequency which is a suboptimal one. It has to be a smart design and getting more out of each rupee of investment. And the last one, and the, perhaps the most important one, that commuter is the king. We can no longer afford to decide that uh, this is the technology and commuters will uh, decide around that. And then I'm quite excited about this national common mobility card. It may appear to be that uh, there are two different cards for bus, for transport, 
for metro or for for ola uber but even a 30 second difference is important for 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 the people so they look for a seamless connectivity and this national common mobility card at the moment all of us are on a pilot mode none of the metro system public transport system have implemented it at this scale but it has such a huge potential making the things so convenient for the commuters and not just be among the public public uh, transport operators but even a repeat ola uber we can't take them as a competitor we have to take them as part of the ecosystem and make sure that the commuter gets the experience is the king who will decide where the service provider should be rather than the service provider selling the king sir we can only do this much and not more for you thank you very much for your attention thank you over to you jade yes it's an excellent presentation and uh, the main thing which is uh, which is there that uh, you shifted your focus from engineering perspective to financial and economic perspective as you rightly uh, brought out that uh, for any mass rapid transit system uh, the ridership is a big question and unless we generate we have a complete ecosystem that all modes of the transport they are there is a multimodal connectivity then next uh, then common mobility card that will improve our ridership but the concerns which you have raised about uh, less ridership uh, during post covid scenario yes uh, it's it's a, today it's a, it's a reality but uh, i think that uh, over the time over the years or with, with one or two years things will improve yes it's a matter of concern then we have to think of other uh, things like you have mentioned that if ridership then we have to make we have to think of other uh, 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 revenue models so that we can generate additional revenue then again you have also discussed about uh, that, uh, standardization that standardization is very very essential if we want to indigenize and reduce the capex then use of technology you have discussed about cbtc system yes it's provide 90 second it's designed for 90 second uh, headway but due to other constraints it is not possible to uh, go uh, beyond less than uh, less than two minutes headway and then common mobility card you have covered that yes it's a challenging task i think in, uh, in only few countries it is uh, working but in india we have taken this challenge and uh, uh, your metro and many other metros are working on this excellent presentation now i move to the next presentation by md NCRTC, Shri Vinay Kumar Singh. Shri Vinay Kumar Singh is the Managing Director of uh, National Capital Transport Corporation, a company under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. This company has mandate to design, develop, finance, operate, and maintain the regional rapid transit system with an aim to provide fast, safe, and comfortable rapid transit between Delhi and nearby NCR towns. Sri Singh as an officer of the Indian Railway Service of Engineers 1988 batch and is a postgraduate from the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Delhi. He is a civil engineer who has worked on a wide variety of challenging professional assignments, including maintenance of the highly demanding Ahmedabad Kandla Port Rail Line as divisional engineer, deputy chief engineer in charge during the first phase of Delhi Metro project. Secretary to General Manager, Northern Railway, and Executive Director, Railway Board. Now over to Shri V K Singh, MD, NCRT. Now you're okay. So uh, okay. Sorry, thank you, Jadi. Uh, on the next one is CBT. So can you keep your mic off? Am yes, I sir. On? Yes, sir. 
You are not audible, sir. No. Okay. मैं भी कनेक्ट कर दूं क्या इधर से चलिए वायर से देखिए ना आप मेरे को पता है मैं क्या बोल रहा हूं क्या बोल रहा हूं मैं बता रहा हूं सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल स्टिल स्टिल आई एम नॉट ऑडिबल एक बार सीरियस प्रॉब्लम हो जाएगा यू आर ऑडिबल हियर यू आर यू आर यू आर ऑडिबल यस वेन आई नॉट ऑडिबल नहीं बट ऑडिबल नहीं सो थैंक यू वेरी मच जेंटलमैन टुडे आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इंटरसिटी कम्यूटर मास रैपिड ट्रांसिट सिस्टम कॉल्ड आरआरटीएस सो इन इंडिया वी आर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम वी आर गोइंग फॉर द दिस काइंड ऑफ सिस्टम सर इट्स नॉट ऑडिबल आई एम नॉट एबल टू हियर वी कैन हियर हिम लाउड एंड क्लियर I think Jaydeep is not audible. आप लोगों को बोल दीजिए। आज Jaydeep तो वो तो ही सुनेगा ना। You have to tell. Can we check the post? Post can confirm if she can. I think participants are also saying audible. Can we check the only maybe on the पीपल आर एबल टू हियर मी सर यहाँ नहीं ऑडिबल है नहीं 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 सर स्पीकर नहीं म्यूटेड है तो मुझे तो नहीं सुना क्या आई थिंक वी कैन स्टार्ट जयदीप इफ यू अलाउ जयदीप कर लेते हैं हम लोग इट इज ऑडिबल टू ऑल दार्टिसिपेंट and i i think even the panelists are also able to hear it and then maybe we'll check it and then we'll, we can come back get connected again i think jd be no not able to hear any one of us yes sir you may proceed sir Now I think you are mute, sir. You may put proceed, sir. Your voice is audible. V K. V K. Can you hear us? हेलो हेलो विजय सर या या वीके कैन यू हियर जयदीप नहीं जे मिस्टर स्वामी यस आई कैन हियर ओके वी टू कैन कम्युनिकेट Okay. Yes, but not with you. Nay, I'm not able to hear. Yeah. Detail, detail. Can detail? Can you hear? No. At the moment, I cannot hear. Before, I could hear him well, but now, not anymore. 
Sonia, will you check? I think yes, they yes. to be like. Sir, I think he have all the rights, sir. He can share his presentation. Okay. Sir, his, in fact, we can see his presentation. Yes, that we can see. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, but how about Jaydeep? Is he? Yes, sir. Now he, he can listen, sir. But Vinay, we can't hear him. Vinay, Vinay, can you hear? Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Sir? Hello? Also in Germany, I can only see the presentation. I cannot hear. Okay. Now the sharing is there, but uh, voice is not there. Uh, now your voice is. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is I'm now linking with another device. And let us see if probably that works. Are you able to hear now? No, yes, yes, yes. Now I am able to hear. Yes, yes you can continue. Now I am linked through another device. Yes. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, sir, great. So right. connected. I think you have connected twice. So I so think... Now... No, this is the only way probably uh, we can share as well as uh, speak also. Okay, sir. You may proceed, sir. Okay, thank you. So uh, this is just a screenshot where, where uh, you can see how probably the intercity travel is happening in national region of uh, India, such as uh, Delhi and around Delhi. And we know what are the implications of this kind of uh, transport links. We can see the people hanging from the trains or hanging from the bus or the all roads getting completely jammed for the whole day. There is no peak period now or rather there is no no peak period. And the city is moving horizontally at a very, very fast pace. And we don't know how we'll be able to solve the issue of infrastructure and mobility, the population of NCR, this huge metropolitan region. So uh, this particular uh, strategic investment of government of India and the concerned state governments called uh, regional rapid transit system is having very clear objectives. And it is a uh, strategic investment on long-term basis. This is not only going to support the present transport needs of the area, but this will, uh, this will give the direction for the future planning and this will be able to absorb the future demand of this uh, region as far as mobility is concerned. The uh, per hour requirement is presently is uh, in the range of 20,000 passengers per direction. And whereas the system at uh, whenever we want to increase the capacity of the system can go up to the uh, extent of 20,000 passengers per direction. So, now, this, this particular uh, investment is going to define the urban development in the region on a long-term basis, and that is what is the purpose of this investment. Otherwise, it can be incremental method of planning and incremental method of uh, fulfilling the demand, but here we are looking at uh, something bigger. So, uh, this is going to... Uh, put the investments by the private sector and by the public sector both focus banner and which is going to develop the whole region in polycentric economic development many many other regions of economic development other than the cbd of Delhi. so what we intend to do is 
to achieve this objective, we have to provide a uh, computer system which is safe, fast, comfortable, environment friendly, and not linked to the schedule. So that it is almost like conveyor belt where the trains are available five to ten minutes, and you are not to plan your journey. You just come to the station and pick up a train. What we intend to achieve, presently Metro in Delhi is able to achieve is about one hour, in a one hour journey time, about 30 kilometers. So 30, 32 kilometers from the city center, which almost practically covers the whole of the national capital, but not the capital region. RRTS, if you see in the uh, other diagram, RRTS will be able to cover almost about 100 kilometers in one hour from the city center in all conditions as as we keep on augmenting various corridors with the passage of time now this is going to lead to densification in around the street so uh, we have identified the areas we are talking to the concerned state governments and the local governments to plan these areas in a way so that about 1.5 kilometer radius area around the stations, each one of the RRTs stations can be planned and developed in a way so that this is truly transit-oriented development with long-term perspective. And people are able to move either on foot or through NMTs to the stations and fulfill their day-to-day uh, -day requirements, whether it is in terms of accessibility to health, education, or any other thing, whether it is uh, uh, their job, they, they're going in the morning and coming back. So that will be fulfilled, which is not uh, practically possible as on today. Now, uh, sustainability as the other speakers also throughout the day, we are watching that uh, we are talking of sustainability of the systems because these are highly capital intensive systems. So uh, on one side, we have to invest a lot of capex. On the other side, we have to keep the system affordable. So uh, very contradictory requirements. These are, uh, we know that uh, in India, in Indian cities, otherwise also, uh, these are highly sensitive to, we are highly sensitive to the price. And the moment price, the people will not use these capital intensive systems which are being made on economic considerations, on the consideration of pollution, on the uh, consideration of decongesting the cities. If we are not able to achieve that, then probably the investment which has been made by the um, public funds, through the public funds, is not justified. So we have a lot of focus on issues which will bring in a ridership, which will bring in uh, revenues, through, uh, not only through the uh, fair box, but other than fair box also, which I'm going to cover in a minute or so. But fundamentally, the uh, transport mode has to be safe, uh, affordable, travel, uh, fast, so that we reduce the travel time, and reliable, so that once somebody knows that it is going to take 30 minutes from uh, point A to point B, then system should be to provide uh, to uh, that journey within the stipulated or expected time. So uh, we are taking few steps to ensure that the system remains sustainable. We uh, we found that it would be easier if we uh, already public funds have invested in some of the issues like uh, right of way for acquiring right of way for highways. As NCRTC, we have used a large number of cases right of way of the highway. So the incremental cost in acquiring right of way, which is otherwise the most expensive thing as of today, especially in the national capital region, we could minimize that. And then uh, we integrated all the three corridors planned in the phase one. This is helping us in a big way in reducing the requirement of infrastructure, not only at the initial stage, but later on also, this is going to help us in cannibalizing many functions at lesser capex investment. This is a standard practice which we do 
where we are uh, uh, reducing the underground portions to the extent possible and bringing them above ground because the capex in this situation is much less as compared to the underground corridors. Our emphasis is that wherever we invest money, we should be able to use that capital expenditure in more than one way. Plus, the integration with the other modes of transport is the core of our planning, multimodal integration. All of us now we are talking and we have taken a lot of efforts into ensuring that we are able to do multimodal integration, not only with the uh, uh, highways, with the railways, with the airports. This also, uh, this is going to increase the ridership and later on modal shift on permanent basis in favor of big transport. Some of the other capex uh, reductions which we thought and which we could achieve were reducing the depth of underground stations. This has helped us in saving a few hundred crores on uh, some of these stations because uh, the moment the depth of the station goes down it, is, it becomes highly capital intensive and in delhi we are facing a peculiar problem either we have to go below the uh, existing tunnels of delhi metro or in some cases above the uh, existing lines elevated lines of delhi metro or other flyovers or maybe some of the uh, power lines we have to plan accordingly one important aspect which we uh, which we kept in mind while we designed the station because this is not a metro system it is a regional system and stations are at a distance of anything between 5 to 10 kilometers we reduce the number of entry this is also it has helped us in saving a lot of money between two different kind of designs like metro we intend to provide more entry exits but here in this system we have reduced that and that has given rich dividends. One important thing which we intend to do here is we found that other than capex, if we can reduce the ONM expenses, then the system becomes a little more sustainable. And that is why we intend to bring private sector efficiencies in the ONM of regional, first uh, regional rapid transit system corridor that is Delhi Neerat. We have calculated this is going to significantly reduce the ONM expenditure. We have brought the uh, private sector efficiencies in maintenance also, especially in case of rolling stock, we went for bundling rolling stock procurement with the maintenance of the uh, rolling stock for a long, longer period of 15 years. By this, we could uh, finalize our commitment, our liabilities during the maintenance period as far as rolling stock is concerned. And we find that this is much more economical than had we gone for the our own maintenance of the rolling stock. As I was mentioning that uh, we, we could bring some of the stations and some of the sections from underground to elevated, that, that is going to reduce the capex expenditure in a big way. The multimodal integration, if you just have a look at this particular table, uh, RRTS will be linked to almost all Delhi Metro lines on one or the other station, maybe more than one station. So also in Meerut Metro, the Meerut Metro itself has been subsumed in uh, on the RRTS infrastructure, thereby reducing the cost of these two systems combined by about 6,000 crores or so. Gurugram, Bawal, Airport, then Indian Railways at Hajar Niyabuddin and Anandriyar, ISBTs, various ISBTs within Delhi, and various bus terminals in UP, Haryana, and Rajasthan. See, this is uh, this multimodal integration is going to help in bringing passengers from different modes to RRTS and from RRTS to different modes. Because at regional level, until unless we do this, the ridership as will be very very uh, i mean clear peaks during morning and evening unlike metro where probably in the day also uh, we are able to get some passengers other than this uh, we have gone for sustainability we have gone for value capture financing with the state governments 
and uh, states have uh, understood the value which uh, these kind of instruments can bring and uh, four or five instruments could be identified which will bring good money during the operation phase for uh, debt repayment and making the system sustainable we also intend to use our infrastructure for running some freight trains so these are not regular freight trains uh, strictly in terms of the like uh, what we see on the indian railways these are basically trains which will be moving perishables and some parcels within the national capital region and uh, we'll be providing cold chains to move uh, the perishables from the farm to the uh, national capital or maybe from one state to another now with the modified uh, regulations legislation this becomes much easier and much more beneficial probably to not only to the rts but to the people uh, to whom it will serve uh, we talked about atmanavar bharat so uh, rolling stock and the signal and telecommunication packages we have strategically we have kept outside the procurement of adb which doesn't allow make in india clauses and we are happy to share with you that uh, we could bring in all the uh, provisions of make in india in these two high end technologies a uh, track also we could uh, get the best uh, track structure which we can get for balasless track for high speed uh, in the country by purchasing the ipr and the design of the one of the latest technologies used internationally we are also uh, some of you may have seen in last two days that we have uh, entered into mou with pl for developing indigenous psds platform screen rows which we intend to use not only on our system but we will provide these uh, platform screen rows to our fellow uh, companies or maybe uh, support at later date to outside india also we we are using various technologies which i will not go into the details of that but yes i can say that uh, common data environment and pim uh, which are core of our uh, planning and design is helping us in a big way and i i recommend these technologies to be used by other projects that is going to help the projects in not only in reducing the cost but in probably helping them at later stage during maintenance stages also by uh, transferring the data directly from bim to asset management software and other things. thank you very much and friends so i think my time is over thank you uh, very very informative presentation and uh, as the indian cities are expanding then this regional connectivity with satellite comes becomes very very important and mr vk singh has brought out that metro connects uh, this 30 km distance in one hour whereas this uh, this uh, regional connectivity will connect uh, this uh, regional rapid transit system which we are constructing will uh, give access to the satellite town within one hour so it's it's uh, faster and reliable uh, reliability of the service is very very essential because uh, uh, this this type of system is really helpful for a city like delhi where uh, population is uh, exceeding its uh, carrying capacity and uh, we have to have expansion to the uh, uh, we have already exhausted suburban uh, portion now we have to look for satellite towns so that uh, uh, and 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 have a faster connectivity so that uh, uh, people living in the satellite town can come and work over in the delhi and go back to their places and this is uh, this type of system as uh, vk singh pointed out that uh, it is cost intensive so the cost reduction at capex and opex level is very very important he has pointed out some some important measures which they are taking to uh, keep capex within control then uh, he has also talked about uh, this uh, optimization of uh, opex expenditure that uh, they are also going for uh, privatization of uh, this uh, they are looking for onm by private operator and 
uh, by doing this uh, this maintenance contract with rolling stock uh, they uh, it is it is most likely that they will be able to reduce operating cost and this multimodal integration which has been planned by ncrtc is also very very important because connectivity with other modes of transport whether it is metro or bus transport increases your catchment area and uh, indigenization they are also doing doing, doing many things on inter, inter, indigenization and it is definitely helping to reduce uh, the capital cost as well as uh, during maintenance it will also help to reduce the operating expenditure as well very very informative presentation uh, next presentation is from uh, uh, dr vijay vijay dikshit he is managing director maharashtra metro rail uh, corporation limited an acclaimed railway administrator and an efficient infrastructure builder an eminent institution builder and urban transport professional presently heading maharashtra metro rail corporation limited as managing director associated with indian railways for over 30 years including association with mumbai suburban and urban rail transport for over 15 years at various levels covering planning designing constructing and maintaining large scale rail infrastructures and operation of services and administration of institution on both western and central railways known for total transformation of rail infrastructure and quality of service to both passenger and freight customer and public in general as drm nagpur central railway currently as managing director maharashtra metro rail corporation built the organization from scratch being employee number one on 18 february 2015 the day of its incorporation has ensured a very expeditious start and fast progress of this major project overcoming numerous administrative and organizational challenges organized quick and smooth land acquisition achieved fast tie up with international funding agencies kfw germany efd france and eib in short expeditious appointments of consultant and contracts Contractors achieve building up and functioning of organizational structure at board level and at the level of the corporation. His latest accomplishment is inauguration of 11 kilometer stretch of picturesque Aqua Lake of Nagpur Metro at the hands of Honorable Chief Minister of Maharashtra through video link on 28 January 2020 and inauguration of 13.5 kilometer of Orange Line of Nagpur Metro at the hands of Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi through video link on 7th March 19, 2019. Now it's over to Dr. Vijay Dikshit for his presentation. Thank you, Jadeep. You have been too generous. And good day to all of you. I think, will you increase the size of the screen? Uh, it's full. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, we in India are bringing out a new urban mobility solution named Metro Neo. Today only in the morning inaugural session, the Honorable Minister release the standard specifications of this system. We are going to discuss the details of Metro Neo in this presentation. The question is, why Metro Neo? Our tier two, three cities in India, uh, I think we can go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Our two, three, Tier cities in India are presently mobility gridlocked due to the presence of mixed traffic, including buses, personal vehicles, cycles, and pedestrians struggling on the crowded narrow roads. As a result, solutions like Trams have not worked in India, and in fact, 
in the cities wherever trams existed remove them some time back our heavy metro system is too costly for such cities and therefore the ministry of housing and urban affairs appointed a committee including colleagues from delhi chennai and the ministry to look for a suitable system after studying the globally globally available systems in the cities in europe and elsewhere on the next please on the basis of the recommendations of this committee uh, the standard specifications were prepared which have been approved by the railway board ministry of railways which is the competent technical body for this purpose in the country and subsequently the ministry of housing and urban affairs approved the same and now they have been released for the adoption at the national level the video that follows explains the key features of this new system metro new the video please of a mass rapid transport system. A committee of transport experts was formed by the ministry to address the solution for this issue and standardize the specifications of Metro Dia by analyzing and studying the best transit systems available around the world. The committee members visited various manufacturers, operators and vendors to formulate the best solution for Metro Dia. The Metro Neo is a combination of the best features worldwide and an innovative solution for Tier 2 and Tier 3 Indian cities. Rubber tire by articulated electric coaches, quality at par with the Metro, running on elevated or at grade roads powered by overhead traction at a substantially lower cost to that of the heavy Metro rail. The specifications of Metro Neo are standardized and have been approved by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs as for the Metro Railways O&M Act 2002 and have been approved by the Railway Board. Level boarding, comfortable seats, automatic doors, robust communication and station and bus arrival information would ensure an effective and comfortable service. Energy efficient, air conditioned, low floor coaches with regenerative braking, friendly for the young people, will allow easy evacuation of passengers during emergencies through the flatways. These coaches can negotiate sharp curves suitable to the narrow roads of Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. Articulation of coaches can be increased based on ridership. Metro Neo's overhead twin wire traction system running on 750 volts DC is easily installable, safe for passenger operations and cost effective. One DC traction substation every two to three kilometers are planned per section. In the event a substation fails, the adjacent substation can provide power to the section through the SCADA system. The coaches will run on an automatic train protection mode with anti collision safety features such as lane departure monitoring, forward and side collision control, auto speed control, and an auto braking application to maintain a safe distance between coaches. A control center for overall monitoring of the coaches and stations with robust communications with station staff and drivers will also be deployed. 
Automated fare connection and ticketing will be carried out either through transit cards or QR code tickets or through a mobile app. Let's welcome a faster, safer, flexible, economic and cleaner MRT system for an energy efficient city transport that will operate with minimal noise and zero emissions towards a greener planet. I'm sorry for the quality of the video because of, I think, the communication problem. The, the best part of this system is it is of the right capacity and of the right cost for such cities. We have been able to bring down the cost by adopting 10 10 uh, coaches, stations with no frills. They will have no concourse. They will have no rooms. They will be unattended. There will be no AFC gates and all that. System does not have any track. The signaling is very, very simple. That brings down the cost of the whole thing uh, to the one fourth of the high capacity metro, uh, which we are making in the bigger cities. At the same time, the quality of travel is going to be at par with the quality we have now in the metros. Uh, it's uh, in terms of uh, the reliability, comfort, accessibility, affordability, uh, eco-friendliness, punctuality, etc. The technologies which have been used, they are globally available, they are easily adaptable, and we can do indigenous, indigenous manufacturing under our Atmanirbhar Bharat policy. Next. And the best part is all the statutory and institutional covers which are available to our metro rail systems, including the residual cover of the Railway Act 1989, are all available to Metro New. Next. I want to share with you that a, a DPR of Metro New for the city of uh, Nashik in Maharashtra. Uh, covering a network of 32 kilometers with 29 stations has already been made uh, at the cost of about 2,100 crores of INR and it has been approved by the government of Maharashtra and has been submitted. Next. It has been submitted to the government of India and presently under their consideration for the sanction once it is sanctioned, it is. It will soon see the light of the day, and we'll have a metro new system running in the city of Nashik in Maharashtra. Thank you. Again, sir, it's a very, very excellent presentation about the new development of this uh, metro new system. The specification has already been launched. Uh, today in the inaugural session, uh, this uh, this type of system will really help tier two, tier three cities to plan a metro system uh, in the form of Metro Neo. And uh, 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 the cost of the such system will be, as uh, you mentioned in your presentation, that it will be 25% of the cost of the uh, conventional metro system and it will provide the same comfort and same experience as that of metro it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very good beginning and uh, it will be it will also be useful for not only for tier 2 tier 3 city but for, for the last mile connectivity of the uh, in tier 1 city as well or the outskirts of the tier 1 city the system is uh, eco-friendly and it is it i think that it is it is it is a great future in india where 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 the uh, 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 such type of system are needed in many of the cities of this country thank you sir now next presentation is i move to mr uh, professor shivanand swami uh, he is a uh, executive director of the Center for Excellence in Urban Transport at SEPT University. 
He provides advisory support to the Gujarat government on urban and regional development issues and had led multidisciplinary teams for projects supported by World Bank, ADB, UNDP, and state and local governments in India. He is also a, an independent director of Capital Region Urban Transport, the SPV for the development of public transport infrastructure and facilities in and around Bhubaneswar. Professor Swami is a postgraduate in economics and urban regional planning. Over to Professor Swami. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Audible, sir? Yes, yes, yes. And my presentation is visible? Your presentation is visible, but you make it full screen. Yes. I also. made it full screen. Yes. Uh, sir, today, uh, uh, please, in the morning, there was a discussion about uh, hierarchy of systems. In the hierarchy of systems, I think uh, higher order systems have been discussed by uh, the previous panelists. Uh, they have presented uh, the systems, the technology in a, a very... Uh, we believe uh, the buses as they operate today, in terms of numbers, in terms of uh, uh, the quality, in terms of efficiency, they are not wet. And therefore, you need more buses, you need better buses, you need bus priority, you need BRTS, and then you need integrated transport, multimodal transport at the city level. I think that's a theme on which uh, I would like to present because it's a path we believe is towards sustainability. Now, the presentation will essentially have three parts. Begin with very quickly in terms of if we have inadequate bus-based public transport, what are the implications? Then we move on to like how that gap can be filled up in terms of adequacy, quality, on-state priority, and integration. Uh, we know how our system of urban settlements is spread over the country. We have about 7,000 odd uh, urban areas, 8,000 towns and cities, actually. And then we will have about 70 number of 5 lakh plus. Do you really have buses? Estimates are there. Uh, in India, we talk about 2 lakh plus buses are required to support urban bus transport. Whereas we only have about 25 to 30,000 buses operating. And in few cities like Bangalore, some of them are really well uh, uh, resourced in terms of number of buses. Uh, cost of operation is also something which is very critical. Uh, given this, what we need to look at is more buses, better buses. I think that's a theme which we're talking about. Our vehicle ownership rates today are much lower in terms of vehicles per thousand population if you really look at it uh, it's cars essentially are in the range of about 25 30 and daily going to about 110 cars per thousand as opposed to what we have in europe and washington and other uh, north american cities where it's about 200 to 600 i think that's a range already we are feeling the pinch of congestion and therefore, our cities cannot really sustain with the car increasing. And therefore, we need to change over to public transport. When you talk about public transport, if you don't have a bus based system, three possible outcomes. One, IPT takes over the rickshaws, what you see in the left side of the uh, picture. Two, private vehicles start gathering and start 
putting together things there. That's number two there. And then with private vehicles coming in, IPT becomes even worse, and therefore there is no way to move forward. And congestion would in the future lead to reduction in the speeds, maybe below 10 kilometers per hour. And that's the worst condition we have. Many cities have built metro globally where there was no good bus system, they've not been able to achieve good ridership on the metro. One is, of course, the network, as uh, MD uh, Nama Metro talked about. But along with the network, you also need a good, good public transport base because your network is not going to reach each and every household. And that reach or that access can only be provided through bus-based transport system. And then what we have in terms of bus ridership is there, except for Delhi, now in Bangalore, in Mumbai, other cities are yet to catch up in terms of the ridership. Therefore, more buses, quality buses are required. It's important when you talk about more buses. Again, more buses, it is not just more buses or bigger buses. What user looks for is waiting times, less waiting time. And therefore, we need to decide, depending on the demand, whether we need to have a bi-articulated bus or a minibus. What one would like to have is a three, four, five minute headway. That is the max one should have in an urban area during the cover. Off peak hour, it can go up to 10 minutes. And therefore, depending on the choice of the bus, you can have a range of uh, what you call uh, 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 capacities derived from the buses. Uh, an articulated bus can actually carry 9,900 persons per hour per day. If you actually run two articulated bus together, it can go up to 18,000 to 20,000. And therefore, if you have mini buses, you have articulated by articulated. There is also a need, I believe, if you really want to talk about the last mile connectivity, there is also a need for a micro bus, which probably is a 12 to 15 seaters. You only have a driver uh, who collects the revenue as well as uh, takes the bus around. I think that is probably another addition which we probably need in our country today. Most smaller cities today operate with rickshaws as bus transport. I think that's where you need these micro transit systems. Then, I think it is not just adequate number of buses which are required or quality buses. You need something more and that is the priority on street. Otherwise, you will end up having buses, no road space to run. I think Bangalore is a typical case of that sort. If you look at uh, our more shares in top 50 cities of India, very interesting thing is that uh, about 68% of the people, either they depend on walk, walk and bicycle, walk, bicycle and public transport, walk, bicycle, public transport, and intermediary public transport. NMT and collective modes together actually carry about 70% of our urban mobility. And whereas our road design are meant for the remaining 30%, which actually carry very little traffic, two wheelers and cars. Therefore, how do we prevent this car ownership increasing and bring them on to walking bicycles and public transport and other collective mobility systems is the question which you are dealing with. Given uh, this situation, which gives you who is actually having the road space, if really it is there, it's the motor vehicles which gets the road space and not the buses. And therefore, that's when the concept of BRT comes in. The concept of the BRT provides for on-street running ways, that's the exclusive bus lane. You have bus stations in the median, which are accessible, which provides for level boarding, external ticketing. You have vehicles which are clean, modern technology, and you have a trained driver who knows how to deal with passengers. You have intelligent transport systems and pair payments, automatic, you have and external ticketing. Operating plans are very essential so that you have, you know how to manage the schedules. You need an institutional structure. You need to have an outreach and a communication strategy. It is a product 
public transport service is a product we are selling and therefore we need to have a marketing strategy as an essential feature there now there is a range of brt or a bus priority systems which we have now the bangalore city which is probably the best bus transport system in the country but bmtc has very little space for it to operate on street and in fact there are estimates that annually bangalore loses about 38000 crores due to congestion itself on road i think that's a recent estimate there then they have recently moved on to the bus priority and our own estimates suggest that bus priority would save about 18% of bmtc costs in terms of fuel and then other costs there and they would also increase vehicle utilization significantly and if your speeds increase if your utilization increases that also means more passengers and that also more more revenue i think that's the uh, uh, plus plus is what we fail to see and we tend to build flyovers for personalized vehicles and not flyovers or public transport vehicles and that's that's the that's the paradox which we have here bus priority does not necessarily mean you have to have exclusive right of way all through if your bus your roadways are narrow you could also have bus priority only at the bus stations near the junctions in fact in amdavad brts there are a few sections where we do not have exclusive bus way uh, bus lane running all along there is a bus station in the middle and then there are signages and therefore bus priority is only at the bus stations and not through the network that's also something which is possible i think that's something which we should probably explain recent example of hubli dharwa 22 kilometers they carry they carried before covid 19 they were carrying about a lakh passengers per day imagine a 1 million population city 22 kilometers of brt network and 1 million uh, 10 uh, 1 lakh pa passengers per day i think that's a, that's a good kind of a, a system for cities maybe tier 3 which one would like to classify them if so then it's also possible with brt you can actually improvise the entire uh, street network in fact surat has created a walkway a busway a, a public facility along the uh, uh, bus lanes in fact what is important is that bus buses in the mixed lane in our country situation is not going to be viable in the times to come and therefore when we start making roads we make roads as transit ready in the middle you actually reserve about eight to nine meters you may actually use it for buses you may use it for lrt you may use it for metro you may use it for any metro neo or any system for that matter but you must reserve nine meters on all major roads up front when you are actually building that city and they are called as transit ready streets Ahmedabad does have things of that kind as part of its plan and this is the cross section of the transit ready street it can be built there then the third important thing is integration integration an interesting thing is in surat there are three bus based systems what they call a brt and they have a city bus system and then they have a high mobility corridor and these three bus networks are actually presented in the map with different colors red is brt blue is uh, the city bus and the green is high mobility corridor there are 78 stations which have been identified as interchange stations and user can actually i want to get from anywhere to anywhere on this network he can transfer from city bus to city bus city bus to brt brt to city bus the only system in the country which has this multimodal integrated network both physical integration and fair integration i think with the metro coming in in surat that will also be included as part of this uh, net integration plan there this is the bus this is brt interchange stations and city bus to city bus interchange stations are marked here yeah. about 30 percent of the users in surat today actually use uh, uh, this take advantage of this interchange facility there yeah. 
I said the physical and fare integration, uh, you have the BRTS, you have the city bus, and you have the high mobility corridor. What is another important thing is given the city uh, late start in the public transport arena, they actually in, in, in practical terms, they started in 2016. They had about 40 buses. Today, they have about 700 buses. Another 300 buses they, they are going to add. And therefore, it was actually the building uh, ridership for public transport. Frequency was very important. Given the low ridership, they began their operations with midi buses. Now they are looking at standard buses and the articulated buses in the times to come as the ridership builds on. That's an advantage of the bus that you can build up system capacity depending on the requirement. The basics are done now in terms of roadway design and everything else, stations, but the buses and the uh, uh, other systems can be upgraded or uh, expanded to the requirement there. Kubli Dharwad, one city, probably the best Public transport infrastructure for the city size of that kind, 1 million. It has all the uh, uh, integration related aspects, uh, both pedestrian, land use, and uh, uh, public transport, both city bus, the BRT, and the regional. Now they're also moving towards network integration perspective. I think that's uh, something which one must uh, take notice of. Uh, the last one is incentivizing the pricing and institutions. Uh, electric, if you really compare standard, uh, the high quality electric and high quality diesel bus, the prices do not so seem to vary. And therefore, when you move to electric, we're actually moving towards better quality buses. And if you're moving to better quality buses, we need more promotional uh, aspect. It's not in terms of the capital grants or subsidies which are required what you need is viability gap for operations i think that's where the support system is required government of gujarat has uh, uh, promoted a scheme where 25 up to 25 percent of the gap uh, in the operations of the buses is being uh, paid by the state and the local body in 50 50 percent share I think that's that's a big uh, change which has happened there. There is also something which we need to look at, whether we want public operators or private operators. It's very interesting. The cost of the per passenger in KSRTC, if you look to Kerala, uh, Kochi, there are three types of bus systems. One is by run by private, other one is public non-AC, and third one is public AC. Their fares are different, operations are different, the ridership is most of it is on the private city permit buses there yeah and their cost per passenger because they carry more passengers about 1000 passengers per day they carry and therefore this cost per uh, passenger kilometer is less than a rupee whereas on the public bus as well as in india all over the per passenger kilometer cost works out to be about 2 rupees, 50 paisa to 3 rupees in metro and other systems there. And why should passenger pay more? That's one point of the question. Therefore, whether it's public operates and private operates, why should, why should we not exploit the benefit of private operations in our public transport? That's one question. The second question is, is fare a cost recovery mechanism or is fare a passenger ridership attraction strategy. Can we use fare as a ridership attraction strategy? I think we need to do that. Metro fare needs to bring down, if you double your ridership, can we do it in one minute? No, less than a minute, sir. Less than a minute. Yeah. And these are already there. I've already mentioned it. Who is under loss? Who is under this one? And the final point which I would like to make, Buses, more buses, better buses, bus priority, BRT, and integrated transport. No single mode is adequate to service the varying needs of the people. Buses, but buses forms a critical base for sustainable mobility. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Again, in an excellent presentation, Mr. Swami has discussed about that uh, total buses are 25 to 30,000, whereas the requirement is of about to the tune of uh, 0.2 million. 
there is a huge gap. Then, uh, as far as uh, buses is concerned, his solution is not to induct bus like this. Ki you induct and you fill the gap. He has also covered that if if we go in that manner, then but the roads will get congested. Then he has uh, suggested that we should have a dedicated bus priority corridor and he has also shown successful example of such bus corridors uh, working in other parts of the country then uh, the most important thing which he has mentioned about that uh, that metro system or any type of system is not uh, successful unless it is, it is properly integrated with other modes and he has also discussed about uh, the fair integration part as well and uh, he has also discussed about he how how the uh, pricing and institutional building mechanism to be developed and uh, he has also uh, given example of kochi where public and private operator comparison has been indicated and the 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 the, the uh, number of passenger carried by the private operator is much higher than a public operator and the cost uh, per kilometer for a public operator uh, for a private operator is much less than a public operator then he has also discussed about that that uh, for electric bus since it's a cost intensive thing then uh, this viability gap funding has to be given and he has given example of uh, gujarat an excellent presentation. Now we move to uh, la the last presentation by Mr. Dieter Michel Oli. He is board member, Duge Bahn International Operation System. Operations. Dieter Michel Oli, born in 1968, studied mechanical and production engineering at Frederick Alexander University, Erangan, Nuremberg. He has held different managerial positions in Germany and China for Siemens Automation and Mobility Divisions. In 2009, Michel Oli joined the Tushpan Group as Division Director for Signaling, Telecoms and Electrification and took charge of technology and procurement. In 2011, he took over a new responsibility in the Board of Directors of DB Engineering and Consulting is subsidiary of Duge One, which consults and support international clients from feasibility to operations. Since 2017, Dieter Michel Oli has served as a member of the board of managing directors for the Duge One International Operations, which operates and maintains passenger and freight railway systems outside of Europe, including the Middle East and Latin America. He also serves as Chief Sales Officer at Dush Bahn Engineering and Consulting. Both the DB Engineering and Consulting and DB International Operation are part of DB ECO Group Engineering Consultant and Operations. Over to Mr. Dieter. Thanks very much for the kind introduction. Uh, I hope I can be heard well. Yes. Now, um, I would uh, <clears throat> fully share um, the points of view just shown by um, the previous speakers. And uh, as we're operating all kinds of uh, rail and bus systems, I can more than agree to what was said so far. So uh, clearly, uh, the, the move uh, of uh, things is uh, towards more public transport and less private vehicle transport, and that same thing happens here in Germany where almost every second person owns a car. Now let's go to my next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> we are, uh, of course, looking at um, uh, operations from uh, the point of view of uh, having to operate services uh, as an operator who is on most of the services not subsidized at all, such as, for example, long distance passenger, or uh, freight transport. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> now, regarding uh, our services um, <clears throat> in Deutsche Bahn and German Railways, uh, we are bound to deliver highly optimized services in order to be able to earn profit out of our services. And the main portion where 
we determine whether we earn money or not in, in maintenance. Next slide, please. Now, looking at maintenance, <clears throat> what we've done over the last years is we have established a backbone, uh, which we call Diana, or Diagnostics and Analytics Platform, uh, where we feed in all kinds of data that we measure from our assets. Uh, as an example, we have connected all our mainline switches, be it on mass transit or on mainline systems, to our Diana platform, and we are uh, supervising the current, uh, and in that way, we're able to determine uh, about two days in advance if a switch will fail, uh, and in that way, we can send somebody for maintenance on a predictive maintenance basis to repair the switch before it fails. Uh, this is successful over all the items that you see down below, so switch heaters, temperature sensors, cable insulation, level crossings, even vehicles are connected, or lifts and escalators. Uh, and uh, this enables us to reduce disruptions of service uh, by around 50%, which is extreme. And at the same time, and this is mainly why we're doing that, uh, we are able to save about 60% in cost in maintenance. Now, you may wonder, how can we save so many costs? Well, the most expensive part of maintenance is that maintenance that you have to do ad hoc. So when something fails and you send out somebody for maintenance specifically in that event. And as typically the maintenance staff are not all located directly next to the assets, uh, this becomes rather costly because they have to travel to the asset then oftentimes it happened in the past that they, they check the failure, they notice that they're the wrong guy, we send out the mechanical guy, but actually it's electric or an electronic problem, and we have to send out another person. <clears throat> so this is the main portion of, of cost, and here we save a lot. So in total, 60% reduction of cost, that pays much more than the cost of uh, the equipment that we have added to monitor our assets. And in most of the assets, anyhow, we have already monitoring equipment uh, in the assets, such as in trains. Typically, there's a lot of uh, monitoring equipment already uh, delivered with the asset or in elevators and escalators, <clears throat> which we are just simply using, bring it to one platform and from there centrally coordinate all the resources. So <clears throat> that has been a major breakthrough over the last few years on our side. And we're happy to share such information also uh, with railway operators that are uh, in such need of uh, a better maintenance and a better performance of the assets in order to reduce um, cost of maintenance and improve punctuality and customer satisfaction. Because there's nothing worse than an escalator not working when the client has heavy load to carry or a lift that doesn't work. Uh, when a client has uh, some two heavy suitcases with him. Let's move to the next slide. <clears throat> On the other hand, it becomes more and more important to our customers that uh, they experience mobility as a positive event. So that, of course, starts with green buildings, but not only with green buildings, but also with buildings that are uh, passenger-centric in all aspects. And of course, nowadays, free Wi-Fi is a very important uh, topic to all our guests. But as, as well as that, uh, sometimes a bit ridiculous point, having USB chargers uh, in seats that we provide in stations, as an example, or of course, barrier-free uh, accessibility. And of course, more and more people are very much interested in, uh, in a green travel, uh, travel experience uh, from the station, through the train or the bus, uh, into uh, also what they contain as a last mile, such as bike sharing or e-bike sharing. Uh, we even have e-cargo bikes at such station, stations where uh, very uh, environmental conscious uh, riders, they rent a cargo bike to transport uh, their more heavy goods home. But then, of course, we also, as Deutsche Bahn, we provide car sharing, 
uh, where you can rent a car for as low as uh, four euros uh, per hour to uh, go back home. And also these cars for car sharing are electric. So let's move to the last slide. And uh, that's where we're taking a 306 degrees perspective on our customer communication, especially emphasizing digital channels. Now, here as an example, I would like to introduce Espan Berlin, where we're using a variety of channels to communicate with our clients. And of course, it depends on the client, whether they're on uh, more on YouTube or whether they would like to uh, uh, use podcasts as information. Of course, we do provide a website or an app for, for the mobile phone where everybody can check the best uh, and most suitable way to get from one place to another. Whether it is through the SMAN or through bus services or through other means of transport. And we're combining all kinds of means of transport in this app, even including scooter and car sharing or car pooling, because depending on the time, uh, any of those means may be more convenient to our client. And it is clearly uh, very much attaching the client. Uh, to us as we are providing this app to the client free of charge. And uh, even though he can he can book a carpooling or other means uh, through this app, but still he will himself rather give a priority to the mass transit system uh, in normal cases whenever available. So having that said, uh, on one hand, the access to the client is a very important uh, topic for Deutsche Bahn in general. But uh, of course, on the other hand, also being able to provide a um, very well designed to cost product, be it a bus service, be it um, a tram or a uh, S-Bahn or subway service, or of course a main line or even a cargo service. So having said that, well, I would be happy to answer more questions if there are any, and I would like to give back to the speaker. Thank you. Okay, then excellent presentation. And uh, one, one of the most interesting part of this presentation that how diagnostic and, and analytic solutions uh, for conditioning monitoring has reduced uh, operation cost by 60% and reduction in de de disruption by 50%. We will be looking for more details from Dieter. Uh, this is very, very interesting part. And other part is that uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, construction of green building at the stations and uh, passenger centric stations. This is very, very important that passenger should feel that he is uh, he is having Wi-Fi and seats are proper. It is more passenger friendly. Then uh, another important aspect which Mr. Dieter has covered about the first and last mile connectivity. For any transport system, if this is not there, it is not going to be successful. This has been also been indicated by the other experts as well. And other thing is this. We will be looking for a similar type of system, how they, you are operating such system in your country. This is customer communication. That if a person has to plan any journey, he has to have an app kind of system. What I could gather that you have an app, mobile app kind of system, then you can plan your journey from this place to this place. You will be traveling by train and other modes. Excellent presentation. Okay. Now, uh, only one question has come. This is question and answer. Only one question is uh, to Mr. Uh, Dr. Vijay Dishit. Uh, the question is, how do you plan to reduce the infrastructure and signaling costs compared to a bus transport system? Number two part is, are you planning to go for UTO, completely driverless operation? Yeah. Thank you. It will not be a driverless operation. It will be with drivers. And uh, as regarding comparison with the buses is concerned, uh, because our facilities are superior to the bus transportation, 
so our infrastructure expenditure compared to buses will be higher but compared to metros will be much lower okay sir we have already exceeded the time so i will wrap up the uh, the session that uh, there are many major takeaways i will not be discussing upon those things because we have already de discussed uh, during deliberation and uh, excellent presentations from all presenters thank you thanks thank you thanks all of you all fellow panelists thank you sir thank you very much thank you oh, wonderful wonderful thank seeing you. you and we'll be in touch later very nice